Hello everybody, so I got a lot of good responses from my last question and answer video and I was thinking since I got good responses on it and more questions, I'd do another one. So this is going to be sort of like a question and answers video, but it's also going to be like, it's going to be like more than just that. I'm going to explain some things that I've had people ask me, but I couldn't really put into words on like text form, if that makes sense. So I'm going to like walk you through it. So I'm just going to do a couple of my questions that I got asked. If I miss you, I'm sorry. You can just ask it again and I'll get back to you. Um, Horse Freak Forever said, how old were you when you started riding? Um, I was like, I think about like 12 when I started riding. I saw um, my stable that I ride at right now. Um, I saw it on the side of the road, like, because it's like on a road every time. We, won't, we drive down it. We were, I think my mom was driving me to school. And I was in middle school and um, my mom was like, oh, so your friends, they all rode in camps and stuff. And and uh, they seemed to like horses or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really know anything about horses. I'm like, I wonder what it's like. Like, I've never really rode. And I was like, well, you should probably try it. You love animals because I've had animals, like, my whole life. And I love them so much, the, like, my life. So I was like, hmm, maybe I will like horses because they're big. And they seem like there's a lot more to them than just, you know, sitting in a pasture eating because that's what I always saw. Horses as was just animals that eat in pasture, but there's so much more, and they're so much smarter, and there's so much more to it. So, I've been riding since I was 12, about 12. I think I rode before that, like on a trail, but I didn't really know anything about horses at all, <laughs> so I don't count that. Um, O3 Maddie asked, how long have you been riding for? Um, I started riding when I was 12, like I said, and I've been riding for... Uh, I don't know, a while, because <laughs> I went on and off, that's why I don't really know, so I've been riding for like over a few years, um, I had Raja for like 11 months, and I, I took lessons before Raja, and I took lessons before I learned English in Western, so I've been riding for quite a while, probably like three years, and like all, like if you format it all out, I'd probably say, which isn't a really long time, but I've learned a lot, because like the horses that I've had have taught me a lot. Karma's recently taught me that horses learn things so easily, so if you get bucked off once, you're going to get bucked off again because the horse learned a bad behavior. So horses just, if you just listen to your horse, your horse is going to teach you so much more than a person can teach you. So much more than I can teach you, that's for sure. So just listen to your horse. And Caitlin11315 asked, what do you like better, English or Western? I don't think that, um, I don't have anything negative to say about either one. Um, I was a Western heart girl at heart, like I started riding Western first and I liked it a lot and I didn't really know anything different, I had no idea what went on in the English world, I just saw people wearing fancier clothes and it was just a weird saddle, I was kind of like, that's kind of a weird saddle. And then the horse that I rode Western for a long time, he had to move, his owner moved, so then um, my trainer was like, would you like to learn English, because she had just thoroughbreds left and so I was like, oh, um, okay sure I guess I'll try like why not and so then I tried it and she put me on a lunge line the first day and she was teaching me to post at the walk and I just thought it was so weird I was like what the heck why do you have to do this at the walk and she's like you don't she's like I'm just teaching you to get your balance and I was like oh this is really weird she's like yeah I bet it is she's like but this is gonna really help you with your balance because you've never posted or anything before and so yeah um, I don't really have a favorite I think both have different priorities in them like they're both different and special in their own way and it just takes a lot for both of them. I don't think one's easier than the other because in western barrel can be really hard to stay in your saddle. I mean you're going so tight around those barrels and you're going super fast like my friend does barrel and I do jumping and it's so hard to jump because if your horse refuses you're gonna fall and it hurts and horses just in general I think it's not really an easy sport even like though you get used to it and you gain balance and stuff, you're always going to fall off at times, and it just, it's just really challenging, and it's really fun, too. I don't like things that are fun, like, it's too easy. I don't think it's fun. I think it's fun when it's challenging. Um, next top horse said, have you ever shown or shown on Karma? Um, no, I have not. I'm actually trying to get her back to that point. She was pastured for a long time after they showed Karma. She's only, like, four this month. She just turned four. So, Karma really isn't, I don't think, ready to show again, um, especially since she's bucking, but 
her previous owner, which was her only owner that she had her whole life, they broke her and everything. They shoot. They shown her. They have shown her. Whatever you say. Yeah. They have shown her. Um, they showed her a lot actually. They did Western pleasure with her, um, and English pleasure. They didn't do any jumping or barrel or anything because she's young. But they did like walk, trot, canter classes. I think with her and she placed really high. She was actually nominated. Sweepstakes nominated Arabian mare. Ah, my hair. <laughs> um, so she's, I guess, a good deal in the horse world of Arabians, I guess. I don't know. I haven't really been to a show. So that's all the questions that I really got that were newer and that I haven't really answered completely, I don't think. And so, yeah. But um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was um, about horses in general. Hey, guys. So I just wanted to do a really quick video. Um that goes along with the question and answers video number two. Um, I wanted to finish it because last time when I was trying to finish it, it kind of cut me off because I ran out of time like on the computer. So I had to delete like a bunch of clips and stuff. My computer doesn't tend to hold things really well. So um, this is going to be the second part to this. Um, I'm going to talk about like horses and horses expenses, stuff like that. Um, I know a lot of girls who want horses, like what girl really doesn't want horses and um, like for the longest time I didn't really know how much it costed I just rode and I took lessons and stuff so I know how it can be a problem and how you are curious about wanting one or wanting to purchase one and you need to know the prices or even leasing one so what I'm going to talk about is the costs of things like just in general if I leave something out you can remind me in the comments but I'm just going to say what I know or what I can remember at the moment because I have one so I know but I gotta think of it okay so let's start off with boarding boarding is normally my first boarding with Raja was 150 a month, and that was just pasture board, and he didn't get fed or anything. Like all he ate was grass, and he stayed fat on it, and so that's what he had. It was just 150, and it didn't have like an arena or anything. It just had like a grass arena with like fencing around it, and you could probably see it in the videos that I have up of him. And um, his pasture was so nice. He got moved around quite a lot, and all the pastures had like tons of acreage, and they were all full of grass and weeds and everything. So that was great and that was a great price too and there was a tack room and everything so uh, Karma's boarding is the places I've always took lessons at so it's like a nice facility it has stalls it has seven stalls and it has pastures but the pastures don't have any grass in them really so it's just dirt and stuff because there's been so many horses on it and it kind of sucks so she basically just eats off of hay and grain so I have to pay for that too so Karma's boarding fee is two fifty a month and then I have to pay for her feed, which is uh, $60 for her hay, I think, and $50 for her green, or the other way around, I think. Um, but anyways, so it's $50 for hay, and then $60 for grain, and then $250 for her boarding. So, like, you add that all up, and that's what it is for my whole boarding thing. And um, her feet, to get trimmed, I don't put shoes on her. She's really good feet, so she doesn't need any shoes. But if she were to have shoes, it would be like $70 maybe. But since she doesn't need it, um, her feet are just thirty dollars, and the the um, fairy comes out and does other horses hooves, so you might have to pay more for the call or whatever to get them to come out to you. So you just have to need, uh, so you just have to like do it for your area or whatever, like pay for your area. But um, and also like you want to make sure that you get a really good farrier because if you don't, your horse's feet is going to cost so much more money down the road. So just make sure you really do find a good farrier that's recommended don't get someone that's been studying for two weeks and he's like oh yeah I went to farrier school yeah and then he like comes to your house and like jacks your horse's feet up and your horse can't walk for two months so yeah just be really careful because then you won't be able to ride or anything it sucks they'll go lame so yeah just be really careful with farriers just wanted to say that um what else vet is a top thing that you have to get done every year um, my vet costs, the last one I had over here was, uh, how much was he? I think he was 150 I want to say, 150 and he did the Coggins, he did the Strangle shot, he did the Seasonal shots, I don't remember what those were, he did the one that was called Rhino or something weird, I don't know, it was a ton, ton of different shots, I don't even know. So he did the Coggins and everything and he did all that for 150 plus the vet call out because you had to drive out just like farriers have to drive out um hmm and then uh so the vet was like 150 and they need to get their teeth floated like every few years i don't remember what it was but uh depends on your horse's uh teeth 
like if they get too sharp, that's when you're supposed to get their teeth floated because it can really bother the, um, them, especially if you're riding or something, it could be dangerous. So you want to get their teeth floated, and I have no idea how much it costs. I think it costs like $70 to like 100 and something. So yeah, that's kind of like, you're going to have to go on your own with that. And um, yeah, on, that's on top of dental stuff too. So you might want to get like your fair, or your vet to check out the teeth and the whole like inspection. You want your vet to just check, check it all out for you. And then they can give you a good estimation of how much it might cost. And so I did the board, the farrier, the dental, the vet, and I don't think there's much more. Oh, yeah, deworming. Deworming is super cheap. You don't really have to worry about it. It's every two months or so. And it's just like if your horse looks like it's getting skinny, you want to uh, deworm it just in case. And if it doesn't get better, then you want to have your vet check that horse. But for the most part, uh, worms will start to eat their food and like ruin their digest digestive system so you really want to get um, dewormer every two months and uh, yeah and that can cost from like five bucks to like 15 bucks so it's really not that expensive and uh, you want to do that like every two months even your vet can do that or your trainer or whatever my trainer does that for me but I did it myself one time and then she did it after me because she didn't know that I did it so karma's had too many worms too many dewormers <laughs> so yeah uh, and that's really all I have to say. I don't really know of anything else. There's probably, obviously, like, there's major vet bills and stuff, which I have not experienced yet. So those can cost thousands of dollars, though, and rank up pretty high depending on what the problem is with your horse. And the most common things that can be wrong with your horse is um, colicking overnight, colicking just period. Um, horses can get laminitis. Um, they can get colds, which is like.